Welcome to our first virtual fundraiser. I'm Dwayne Walton, the executive director of the Parksburg Point. In this beautiful sunny day, I decided I wanted to work on my tan a bit. Um, but I want to welcome all of you because this is a really uh, important time for us. We always do our fall fundraiser and usually it's in uh, the Point or at Octorera High School. But we all know COVID has really made everything difficult. So we're doing it virtually. So tonight you're going to have the opportunity to hear again from Tim Tebow. He's so excited about the Point and uh, you're going to have some opportunities to hear me ask him some questions, some funny questions also, but hear his passion about the work that we are doing and the work of impacting young people. Uh, before we get to Tim, our chairman of the board, uh, Larry Beaver, he's going to talk to us a little bit about how the point has handled all these difficulties over the past year. Some great things have happened and he's here to encourage us to say, hey, keep pushing forward, right? So again, stay tuned. Uh, it's going to be a really fun evening and we hope to raise about $45,000 and that's where we're going to really need you. Hello everyone. My name is Larry Beaver and I serve as the chairman of the board of the Parksburg Point Youth Center. In 2019, the point ended on an incredible high. We hosted Tim Tebow at Octorera Senior High School for our fundraising event, and we brought out a record number of supporters from the community. And by all estimates, it was a blessing to everyone. The point proved our ability to bring the community together to celebrate and support the important work of addressing the spiritual, emotional, and academic needs of our young people. We were on a high heading into 2020. We developed a comprehensive strategic plan which allows us to bring the benefits of the point to thousands of youth over the next five years. Our strategic plan brought a new level of excitement to the organization. We were prepared to blaze a new path forward to maximize our impact in Chester County. Then March came and as we were preparing for our spring fundraiser, we were hit with the COVID-19 pandemic. And as you know, the world changed forever. We have all been greatly impacted by this pandemic. Schools closed and consequently the point was closed. The youth that relied heavily on our programs for support, meals and spiritual guidance were left without a place to go. We all hoped that this closure would end in a short time and that would be, we would be able to get back to normal. When this didn't happen, we had to find a new normal. Our board of directors and staff in a time of uncertainty was certain about one thing. Jesus wanted us to continue to support our kids. So how did we do it? First, we partnered with Octorer to address food insecurity for over 700 students. Second, we launched our summer outreach program when school supply food ended. Third, we launched our New Point intern program. Fourth, we developed and launched the Access Point program. And lastly, we introduced an iPhone and Android app. Uncertainty is the word that has come to define this time. We are all searching for something concrete and stable to hold on to. We submit that Jesus is the one in whom we can find true certainty and stability. Our youth more than ever need the hope of Jesus. We say every child deserves hope. Please help us in bringing this hope to more students. Thank you. If it wasn't for the point, um, I really don't know where will I, you know, how, how will I provide food and the strength, you guys give me strength, a lot of strength. I wouldn't know what to do if you guys didn't come along.
I appreciate you. For being there for me and my family. Yes. And help me pray. It gives me the strength to keep going. Thank you. I have that. <laughs> I, I appreciate it. Hi, my name is Scott Feather, and I have the privilege of being on staff at Gateway Church in Parksburg, Pennsylvania. And we are so glad that The Point is a part of our community. Uh, when I think about The Point, honestly, the first word that comes to mind is hope. It's, it's a place where kids and families can receive hope, and it's a place where people who know Jesus can distribute hope. It's a place for them to serve and all of this is done in the midst of relationship. And so, when, again, when I think about hope, I know that hope has a name, and that name is Jesus Christ. But in our community, hope has another name, and it's called The Point, where people can realize that there is more to this life than just their struggle. It's a place for them to meet somebody, to get connected with somebody. It's a place where real love and relationship matters. As a pastor in this community, I don't know what we would do without The Point. So the point, thank you for what you do, and we pray blessing on you and that you just continue to do what God has called you to do. Thanks for tuning in uh, today for this. I'm so excited about what the point is doing and what this night is going to mean. Tim, it is so good to see your face and hear your voice and to be connected with you right now. Oh, Dwayne, I got to tell you, man, I missed you from last year. It was such a blessing getting a chance to hang out with you and your team and your community. And um, honestly, I, I love your ministry and everything that you and your team are doing and the way that you are loving kids and um, you're coming around them, giving them a home. Uh, a lot of times in, when they don't necessarily have, they don't understand what home looks like and you're doing that with your love for them. And I'm grateful to, to be here and to support you and your team and, and your community. I'm so grateful to be able to share, even though it was a lot of Eagles fans giving me a hard time I, I still loved it. It's a lot of amazing people. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Listen, man, that's why you're here today, right? Because um, you, you really left an incredible impression on our community. Um, it's been a whole year later. And throughout the summer, um, anytime I bump into people, they tell me about that event. Um, we set records, the most people we've ever had to one of our events. But most importantly, the impact was felt um, from adults to the kids that were there. Uh, we had a good amount of uh, special needs kids that came out with their parents just to hear from you. And you really blessed us. God used you greatly. So with all these changes, uh, we always try to bring someone in on our, for our fall event. Um, we, it was so easy uh, when, when we said, hey, let's see if we can get Tim back, knowing that it has to be virtual online. Um, everyone was like, yeah, that's, that's the way to go. So again, uh, we appreciate you being here. And uh, I have a few questions I want to ask you. And, uh, let's do it, man. Okay, Come on. Great, great, great. So here it is. Like last year, uh, it was incredible. You blessed us. You even spoke to our football team. You inspired all those guys. Um, but now things have changed, not just for us in Octorera uh, School District in Coatesville and The Point, but all over the world. Um, how has the COVID-19 impacted you and how have you been able to roll with all these changes? Well, I think that it, um, it started with a lot of disappointments, um, to be honest with you. Disappointments in uh, baseball. Um, I felt like I was doing the best I, I, I ever have in spring training and baseball said no more and there was no minor leagues. And so um, in my situation where I'm an older baseball player that came from not playing for 12 years and I started it, it's a huge disappointment. 
And, um, and then there's been a lot of disappointments. I've had a lot of family members and friends that have uh, had um, COVID-19. I have a few people that are very close to me right now that have it. And so we are trying to support and love them, even though we can't be with them in the hospital and, uh, and in different places. So that's very disappointing and, and, and frustrating, to be honest. But at the same time, I think it's important that we, we find the silver lining or we find the purpose in it, because I believe as, as believers, every setback is really a setup for something different that God has for us. And, um, and so to find that silver lining is, you know, I just got married in January. And so I had a chance to really have a lot more time um, with my wife, Demi, than I would have had flying all around and, and playing baseball in a lot of random different cities and states. But I had that time. So just make the most of it. And, um, you know, at TTF, we had the chance to launch a lot of campaigns that we might not have had as much time to do if I was off doing that. And so while there was disappointments, it also set us up for something different. And so I think that's how I, I would, you know, encourage everybody that is watching this is, you know, you might have a disappointment and frustration, and I don't want to minimize that. But I do want to encourage you that there might be another door that was open that has set you up for something different. And I'd also encourage you that in the disappointing lows in our life, I really believe that's when God does the most in our hearts and our life to be able to set us up for what he has next. And if you look at the biblical heroes, man, so many of them were wounded greatly before they, they were wounded deeply before they were used greatly. And that test in their life turned into a testimony later. And I know there's are cliches, but man, they're, 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 they're something that I hold on to because man, those lows in, in my life, um, they suck and they hurt in the moment, but but you got to believe that that God doesn't waste our pain when it's given to Him. And I really believe that when we give it to Him, those disappointments, those frustrations, He uses it in our life and for us and for other people to use it as a ministry. And um, and that's really what what our hope is is to be able to turn the disappointments into testimonies and um, and to be able to turn it into learning moments in our heart where we learn, grow, and adapt so we're better tomorrow than we are today. Wow. Wow. Heck, man. Thank you. So, you know what? I love your energy, man. <laughs> and it, it even comes off that screen, man. Uh, so here's another question I have. Um, we've been following you. We love the work that your foundation is doing. Um, you've always cared for the special needs kids, but we've seen that you're, you've transitioned to a, deal with the issue of sex trafficking. Um, can you tell us about that and how that has impacted you? It, it really goes to the same philosophy, um, our mission statement is to bring faith, hope, and love to those needing a brighter day in their darkest hour of need. To sum it up, it's a fight for people that can't fight for themselves. And my life was totally and radically changed when I was 15 and I met a boy in the jungles of the Philippines who was born with his feet on backwards. And I knew that day that sports was no longer as important as it was, but my calling was to fight for this boy and boys like him all around the world. And, and, and that was a big heart of our foundation, but it's led into so many other things, starting with with hospitals and Timmy's playrooms and orphan care and uh, special needs adoption into night to shine and so many things. But it's also led us to, to eight years ago, um, I got a call from my dad who was preaching in an underground pastor's conference in a very remote country. And um, where he was um, preaching, there was four girls that were getting sold and, um, and he could not do anything. Because just like my eyes were open to that boy, to that, to that evil of him being thrown away and being viewed as insignificant, and even most of them viewed him as cursed um, in the village which he was in, is um, that's just not right. And, and, and no longer could I, not, could I stand by and not um, do something about that. And the same for my dad. When he was there, he had to do something. So he took out all the money in his wallet, $1,250, and he bought those four girls. My dad wasn't involved in... Um, his his ministry was was sharing Jesus and building churches and and it wasn't in in this but it, when he his eyes were open he could not do anything and I think that's one of the examples is we can't just stand by and not do something and so he all the money is wallet twelve hundred fifty dollars and he bought those four girls and uh, he called me and he told me and you know what once I heard I could not do anything and so we stepped up and built our first um, safe home for him to start taking care of and that led to more safe homes and more safe homes and then that led into prevention and rescue in a lot of different areas. And so we've been in that fight for about eight years now, but we decided that we wanted to go public with it because, um, because honestly, 
We believe it's one of the greatest evils in the world today because there are 40 million people. And we know that we can't push this darkness back on our own. We need an army of people that are willing to say no longer on our watch. They're going to stand with us. And so that's one of the biggest re- reasons that we started really sharing the stories. And, and obviously none by name and none by location. But we wanted to create awareness for it so people would stand on the line to say, you know what? This isn't just happening around the world in third world countries. This is happening in our backyard. This is happening all over the world. The number one consumer is America of this. The number one consumer in the world. And so um, it's happening all around us and it's also happening around the world. And so our goal is, yes, we wanted to prevent as many as possible, rescue as many as possible, restore as many as possible, but also create awareness. So there's an army of people that stand on the line to say this is not happening in our backyard and it's not happening on our watch. That's, that's just incredible. And I, I thank you and I thank the foundation for really caring for the least of these. Like you said, they don't have a voice. Um, no one is there to advocate for them, but the Holy Spirit has uh, right. really inspired you and your uh, organization to really go in there and fight for them. And it's, it's, a, it's a brutal fight. You're fighting against a system that's entrenched in this world, has been around forever, um, but we got to fight against it. Um, now, when it, when it comes to working with young people, the point is uh, we see ourselves as, a, as an ally to the work you do. Can you explain to our community how important it is to have an organization like The Point that addresses the spiritual, physical, emotional, and academic needs of young people? Yeah, it's vital. It's, it's vital. It's vital. We have to have it because what you're doing is you are you are taking so many kids that um, that they have a choice, right? They have a choice in what direction they're going to go. They're going to have a choice in, in what they're going to choose and who they're going to love and ha- what they're going to pursue. And y'all are saying, hey, listen, what the world's telling you, it doesn't have to be that way. It doesn't have to be about money, fame, and power, but it can be about purpose and calling a love and, and family and uh, and what is right. And, you know, I've loved seeing you and your team, the way that you care for these kids. And uh, because there is a battle, there is a battle going on for for their hearts, right? And, and 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 you guys are doing an amazing job in your community of winning that battle, of being able to share faith, hope, and love, of being able to encourage these kids, of being able to give them a different direction that they can go in. And that's why I cared so much for it when I was there with you and still do because I love the point because it is telling kids what the actual point of their life is, that they are loved, that they do matter, that they are significant, that they have worth and they have value, that they're not they're not meant here to be average. They're they're special, they're unique, they're purposeful, and God has a purpose for their life. That's what the point is. You get to tell them the point of Jesus and what he did on the cross and how that point can change their life and change the direction their life is heading. Wow, you know, they might be an opening for executive director of The Point. (laughs) Would you like that? That's so incredible. Thank you so much. Um, So last year, one of the most uh, uh, memorable moments was when the football team stood up and you addressed them directly. And here are guys that were just inspired to have you there. But you went beyond football. Um, You talked about faith. You talked about perseverance. Um, Now, across the country, young people who were really into sports and had a lot of their hopes and dreams tied to their athleticism, a lot of that is being erased or at least being delayed. And so there's a lot of challenges now. Um, Some sports aren't even playing because of COVID-19. What would you say to these young people, um, guys and girls, that had their hopes wrapped up in that senior year and sending out videos to uh, D1 schools and a lot of that may not be happening? How would you uh, speak to them right now? Yeah, first of all, I would say that I'm extremely sorry because it sucks. It really does. That's so disappointing and I know I can just put myself in their shoes as a senior in high school, how much I cared for it, how I worked so hard for it, and how it is so disappointing. And I said this earlier, but I would make this point, that God never wastes your pain when it's given to Him. You know, I learned that from um, my, my oldest sister, who's been a missionary overseas with her family for the last 15 years, and they've had to go through a lot of hard times. And I would think, man, like, God, they're, well, like, why, why would they be going through this? Why would they be going through the sickness or the illnesses or the persecutions or all of the different things? And I don't need to get into all of them, but why would they be going through it? And she would encourage me and she would say, but 
to me, God will never waste this. He'll never waste it when we give it to him. He'll never waste this. And I would encourage the, the young people that are watching that they went out and their, their senior year got delayed or postponed or they're not going to have it and they're not going to have those memories. But, you know, I, I really believe we serve a sovereign God and he's never going to waste that disappointment or that pain when it's given to him. But we have a choice in that. We can hold on to our bitterness and that disappointment and we can use it as resentment toward whatever, or we can give it to him say, hey, you know what, God? I don't know why this happened, what's going on, but you're God and I'm going to trust you. And here's this disappointment. Here's this pain. I'm going to give it to you. And when I start to feel that way again, I'm going to give it back and I'm going to take it and I'm going to give it back and I'm keep giving it to you because you're God and I'm not. And I'm going to trust you because you're faithful. You always have been, you always will be. And so I'm going to trust you in this moment. And, and, and something that is so freeing when you do that, when you give it to him, that there, it is, it is such a supernatural peace that when we give that to him, um, that, you know what, we can cast our burdens upon him because he cares for us and we can give him our burdens. And in that exchange, we get peace from it. Right. And, and that doesn't necessarily minimize the, the disappointment that, that, um, that young people are going through with losing their season or losing their senior year. Um, but it does, say, you know what, even in the midst of disappointment, I can trust you. And when we go back to the, to the Bible, a lot of the, the heroes, they went through a lot of different po- disappointments, but man, one day later, they could see how God was using it, right? And in our lives, if we trust him and we keep giving it to him, even in those sucky moments, I think one day, a year, two, 10 years from now, we can turn around and we can say, wow, look how he did that. I That would have never happened if everything went the way I thought it was going to go. And I'm so grateful that in I couldn't say this at the time, but I can say it now. I'm so grateful for so many of the lows and the disappointments in my life. And and it was hard to see that in the moment. But when you turn around, you can look back and you could say, wow, God was doing something. He was doing this. He was doing this. He was doing this. And that would have never happened if it was my plan. But I'm so grateful it's not my plan because honestly, I'm not that smart, but he is. And, 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 and that's where I think also the faith and the trust comes in that he's God and he loves us and he has the perfect plan. And it might not be my plan, but my plan is not perfect. That's awesome. Thank you so much, man. The, the passion and the truth that you're speaking. And we just hope that uh, these kids would, you know, uh, hold on to that and know that, hey, listen, it's, it's going to be tough. No one is going to deny that you're going to have the toughest year probably of your life. But, that's the, right. but God is there and he'll yeah. walk you through it. And you, right. you're an example of that. Thank you so much. Hey, um, the, what we want to do now with you is it's a little fun game. I want to do a little bit of word association. Are you okay with that? Oh, I love it. Let's do it. Okay, good. Uh, first, first thing that comes to your mind after you hear these terms or these words. Uh, number one, greatest of all time. Jesus. Number two, football. Passion. Special needs children. Worthy. Best topping on pizza. Pepperoni. LeBron James. One of the greatest. (laughs) (laughs) Hero. Hero. Sacrifice. Philadelphia Eagles. Um... I always already said passion, but passion's the first word that came to mind. But I would say, um, loud. <laughs> uh, marriage. Beautiful. Sacrificial love. Uh, meaningful. Final one. This one is uh, a bunch of kids asked me to ask this. This is not me. Um, best athlete not named Dwayne Walton. Um, Michael Jordan. Yeah, we're close, right? <laughs> oh, it's, it's, it's like 1A, 1B. You can't even go 1 and 2. It's like 1A, 1B. 1A, 1B. Yeah. Hey, hey, man, I, again, this was fun, but this was powerful, inspirational. Uh, thank you so much um, for, for joining us, being with us for this, for our fundraiser. Um, we hope that we are able to meet our goals, but this is just a blessing to our community, regardless of meeting those financial goals. But God has always been faithful, and yeah. you've been a big part of that. 
Well, I just, you know, want to say thank you to you for your heart, for your heart for these kids. I want to say hey to all the kids, all your staff. I want to say hey to, to your community. Dr. Herrera, thank you so much for, for welcoming me in last year. And, uh, and thank you for your support for Dwayne. And I ask you that this would be the best year yet in fundraising is, you know, we think, oh, it's not going to be as much because of COVID. But you know what? Our God's a lot bigger than COVID. And so, you know what? We can crush those goals. So um, please support The Point and Dwayne and uh, all that they're doing to make such an impact. And Dwayne, we're grateful for you. We're so thankful for your impact, for your heart, for you choosing over over and over and over again to put other people first because it matters and and we're grateful for that and grateful for you great so i have before i go i might get in trouble if i don't do this can you give a shout out to my wife amy amy <laughs> how you doing man uh hopefully i get a chance to give you a hug real soon and say hey to your wonderful family but we're grateful for you because Dwayne can only do what he's doing because he has the support from you and uh that you are just um, so supportive and kind, and I, I look forward to giving you a hug. God bless you. We appreciate you. Thank you so much. I tell your team and everybody that said, hey, okay, buddy? I will, and keep doing the work you're doing. God is using you greatly. You too, man. Thank you. We'll look forward to touching base soon. Sure. sure. Sounds good. Awesome. Right. awesome. Thanks, man. Sure. Bye-bye. We'll how incredible was it to hear from Tim? His passion, his understanding of the point and the importance of the work and his heart for impacting young people, that was really refreshing and something we need to hear right now. Um, but I'll be honest, hearing from Tim is wonderful, but I've been hearing from people all summer. I've been hearing from parents. I've been hearing from kids. I've been hearing from teachers. And it's been a tough time for our community. Just recently a grandmother called me and she was crying on the phone because she's taking care of her five-year-old granddaughter and she had to get her online for school and this grandmother had no idea what to do and she said she sits at the computer, she's crying and her granddaughter is crying and she feels guilty that she's not helping her learn. On top of that she has some health problems. She says it seems like it's getting worse because of all the stress. People are really hurting right now. The other day after church, we brought some kids back and we always ask them to give us a prayer concern. And one after the other, they're saying they feel depressed, that they're not leaving their bedrooms and they're sleeping all day. Um, COVID-19 has really hurt our community um, and our community needs us. They need the point. From the beginning, we never closed. We couldn't. And we helped to feed the community. We helped to uh, provide education, a uh, place for them to uh, go to school. But right now, the community is saying, we need the point to be open. We need our kids to come there in a safe, uh, 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 safe way so they don't get uh, hurt or sick. And, and we can do it. We can pull it off. And we've been working on that. Um, but as much as the community needs the point, uh, the point needs you. Uh, we need you to stand with us, uh, support us financially so we can meet the needs. Um, it's difficult to actually function in this environment. Uh, everything we do now has to be in small groups. And so we had to go out and hire those interns so they can work with smaller groups of students. So we had to multiply our staffing just to address the needs. On October 26, we're going back to our regular scheduled program where kids can come after school. Uh, we have to have a limited number. We have to keep all the restrictions uh, and the social distancing things uh, going, which we will. But it's so important that we're there for these kids to be able to have fun again, laugh again, hear about Jesus Christ and be together. In order for us to do that, we need you. And so right now, for, for those of you who are viewing this, uh, you see a donate button. Uh, click that button and give whatever you can. Our goal tonight is for 45000 I don't know if we're going to make that, right? But I'm trusting that um, God is faithful. And uh, but. He needs you to be faithful also. So please give. Some of you are viewing us on Facebook. And if you are and if you feel compelled to, to give, you can go to our website, www.parksburgpoint.com. And there's a donate button there too. And, and give whatever you can so that we can be open, we can function, we can serve the community, we can be a blessing to the kids, and we can be true to our statement. Every child deserves hope. And what time other than this um, can we really uh, just appreciate the idea of hope, right? Hope means we're going to get through 
what's happening right now, right? And so that's what our families need, our kids need, our communities need. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. It was, it was a wonderful night. Uh, of course, Tim Tebow was great, but now we need you to do your part. Um, help us make our goal of 45,000. Thank you and good night.